Hi, I'm Mark Monroe of PPO2.com and Partial Pressure Products. In this segment of our video series on the Gorilla Diving Products PO2 monitor, we're going to take a look at the operation of the display board. We'll discuss the operation of the board while diving, calibrating the sensors, and changing the system settings. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is turn power on to the display board. The control button is a partially threaded rod. We can see that a section of it is threaded and another section is not threaded. In the power off position we've engaged a few threads in an insert mounted in the inner housing and back the control button out until power is off. In order to turn the power on we need to rotate the control button clockwise screwing in the control button until the power is on, there are no more threads in the ferrule and the button is able to be pushed. So let's turn the power on. Holding the control button we rotate it clockwise until we see power come on. We then continue rotating it until there are no more threads engaged with the insert. Now that there are no threads engaged, we're now able to push the control button. In order to turn the power off, we rotate the control button counterclockwise until we see the power turn off. Then two more rotations. When power first comes on, you should notice that all the LEDs on the board will light up, the digital panel meter will power up, and the backlight will come on. This allows you to see that all the LEDs are working, and this also puts a full load on the battery. The battery voltage will then be displayed on the digital panel meter. So let's turn power on again. All the LEDs are lit, the battery voltage is displayed, and then we enter normal operation. Let's discuss the board in normal operation. The three amber LEDs you see at the top are toggling between the three sensors that I've programmed it to read. Each LED represents the sensor being read. Currently we're on sensor number two, sensor number three, and sensor number one. We'll continue in this loop indefinitely or until power is turned off. This display board is programmed to display three sensors. Later on, we'll see how to program the board to display one sensor, two sensors, or three sensors. But first, let's take a look at the onboard PO2 alarms. Located between the green header connector and the digital panel meter are three LEDs used to display our PO2 alarms. Currently, our PO2 is between our low and high alarm set points, so we're indicating our PO2 is OK with a green LED. If our PO2 goes above our programmed high PO2 set point, the upper red LED will light indicating a high PO2. If our PO2 drops below our low set point, then the lower red LED is lit. These LEDs are also mirrored on the optional heads up display. If your battery voltage is low, a red battery low LED will light. A quick review of our LEDs. We have the three amber sensor LEDs which indicate the sensors currently being displayed on the panel meter. We're currently on sensor number one, sensor number two, and sensor number three. Right now our PO2 is good. I have a high PO2 alarm of 1.4 programmed as my high PO2 alarm set point. If we go above a PO2 of 1.4, I'll get a high PO2 alarm. My low PO2 alarm set point is programmed for 0.8. If we go below a PO2 of 0.8, I get a low PO2 alarm. And if our battery voltage goes below 7.2 volts, we get a low battery alarm. The first function we want to look at is turning your backlight on and off. After initial power up, the backlight will be off. If we wish to turn the backlight on temporarily, we only need to momentarily push the control button. Note that the sensor LEDs will return to sensor 1, cycle through two sequences of displaying all the sensors you have programmed to be displayed, and then the backlight will turn off. Since I'm monitoring three sensors, when the control button is pushed, we immediately display sensor 1, sequence through displaying all three sensors twice, then the backlight will turn off. I'm going to turn the backlight on and I'd like to point out that when the control button is pushed the decimal point will change. Here we see the decimal point in the proper position. 
but when the control button is pushed, the decimal point to the extreme right will be active. This might be helpful in diagnosing a stuck magnet issue. Also note that when the backlight is temporarily on, no other control button functions are available until the backlight turns off. To turn the backlight permanently on, we'll press and hold the control button until all three amber sensor LEDs light simultaneously, then release the button while they're on. The backlight is now permanently on. To turn the backlight off, we again press and hold the control button until all three amber sensor LEDs light simultaneously and release while they're on. The backlight is now permanently off. Let's review what we've covered so far. In order to turn the power off, we rotate the control button counterclockwise until your power goes off. We then make a few extra rotations to make sure the power doesn't turn on accidentally. To turn power on, we rotate the control button clockwise until your power comes on and then make a few more rotations until you've disengaged the threads and you're able to push the control button. After the initial system tests, we'll enter normal operation. In order to turn the backlight temporarily on, we momentarily push the control button. Our backlight will now be on until it completes two cycles of displaying the sensors you've programmed it to read. When we're in this mode, pushing the control button performs no functions, but we can see the decimal point moving, telling us the control button is pressed. In order to turn the backlight permanently on, we press and hold the control button until all three amber sensor LEDs light, and then release the control button while they're lit. Your backlight is now permanently on. To turn the backlight permanently off, we press and hold the control button until all three amber sensor LEDs light and then release the control button while they're lit. Your backlight is now permanently off. The next function we need to take a look at is calibrating our oxygen sensors. In order to enter this menu, we need to have a low PO2 alarm. You can see here that we have a low PO2 alarm indicated on our PO2 alarm LEDs. If your PO2 is above your low PO2 alarm set point, you will not be able to enter the sensor calibration menu. In order to enter the sensor calibration menu, we're going to follow the same procedure we use to turn the backlight on and off permanently, but we're going to wait for the amber sensor LEDs to light a second time. The procedure will be to press the control button until we see the amber sensor LEDs flash twice. The second time we see them light up, we'll then release the control button to enter the sensor calibration menu. So let's press and hold the control button, wait for the amber sensor LEDs to light twice, and the second time they light, release the button while they're lit, and we're in the sensor calibration menu. We're now in our sensor calibration menu. You can tell we're in our sensor calibration menu because we're no longer toggling between sensors. We're on sensor number one, You'll note that all three decimal points are active on the digital panel meter. And also, our OK PO2 LED is off, and our high PO2 alarm LED is lit. The PO2 alarm LEDs have a special function while we're in this menu. The high PO2 alarm LED indicates that we'll increase the PO2 displayed when the control button is pushed and a low PO2 alarm LED indicates that the PO2 displayed will decrease when the control button is pushed. So let's take a look at these special functions. When the high PO2 alarm is lit, if we were to press on the control button, the displayed PO2 value will increase. A momentary push will increase the PO2 in small increments, and holding the control button in will increase the PO2 in larger increments. At small PO2 values, as we are here, the rise is not as noticeable as it would be at higher PO2 values, as we'll see when we calibrate the sensors in oxygen. Also note that when you push the button to change the PO2 value, the green OK PO2 LED will light, telling you that the PO2 value is changing. So let's flood the system with 100% O2 and calibrate our sensors. When the system is flooded with 100% O2, we should have a reading of 1.00 on the display. We can see here that we need to increase the value displayed for our sensor, but our low PO2 alarm LED is lit. So in order to raise our PO2, we'll need to toggle back to increasing the value, and we'll do that by rapidly pressing the control button twice. 
High PO2 alarm LED is lit to increase the displayed PO2 value. Press twice again. We'll now be lowering the value. Again, raising the value. So now we'll press the control button until we reach the proper value for our calibration gas. We're looking for a value of 1.00. and here we're right on the threshold. In order to calibrate sensor number two, we'll rapidly press the control button three times. We can see that our amber sensor LED has advanced to sensor number two. We can also see that we're reading a little high, so we need to lower the value. Our high PO2 alarm LED is lit indicating increase. We need to toggle our direction, so we rapidly press the control button twice we're now ready to decrease the value. So let's lower the value until we see 1.00. If you press and hold the button, the value will change four times faster than pressing the control button momentarily. We've overshot our calibration point, so now we need to increase the value. Now we'll toggle it to the next sensor by rapidly pressing the control button three times. We're now on sensor three as indicated on the amber sensor LED and we'll raise the value up to our calibration point of 1.00. We have a long way to go so I'll hold the button. When we get close, we'll release the button and make small steps to our cow point. When you're at the last sensor you have programmed in to be red and press the control button to advance to the next sensor, We'll wrap back around to the first sensor. I'll cycle back through the three sensors to double check our calibration. Now that we've finished calibrating our sensors, we want to exit back into the normal operating mode. To do that, we rapidly press the control button four times within three quarters of a second. When we exit the sensor calibration routine, the system will restart and go through our startup tests. We're now back in our normal operating mode. Please watch the next video in this series where we'll learn how to change the system settings. We'll cover the process of changing the number of sensors we monitor, the dwell time between sensor toggles, and changing our low and high PO2 alarm set points.